This video covers how racial bias can affect clinicians' evaluation and treatment of pain in patients, as guided by the 5-Minute Moment for Racial Justice Teaching Framework. The 5-Minute Moment for Racial Justice is a teaching framework to promote health equity and racial justice in medical education. The framework relies on a five-step approach that discusses the clinical and learning context, the current standard of a medical diagnostic or treatment, the historical roots and bias of that standard, contributions to health disparities, and steps to take to promote health equity. This framework offers educators a structured way to talk about this topic in a concise manner across commonly encountered clinical scenarios. By the end of this video, you will be able to describe racial disparities in pain management across ages and clinical settings, and understand how implicit bias can affect the way we assess and treat pain in patients. An eight-year-old male presents to the emergency room for fever and abdominal pain. He is diagnosed with acute appendicitis. While awaiting surgery, the mother of the child asks the learner physician, can you give anything for his pain? The child is given one dose of acetaminophen, and an hour later, his pain remains uncontrolled. This is a common scenario. How might implicit bias be contributing to an equitable patient care here? These conversations are tough to have. Let's watch how two clinicians navigate this discussion. This is a good opportunity for us to talk about implicit bias and how it affects the way doctors perceive and treat pain. This wasn't something I learned during my training, but it's very important for us to know in order to provide equitable care for all our patients. Let's spend a few minutes talking about this. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Pain is difficult to measure objectively. Instead, there are patient-reported pain scales, such as the Wong-Baker Faces Scale, that is often used to help children communicate about their pain. We then rely on our clinical judgment to guide treatment interventions. What do you consider when you prescribe pain medications to patients? Well, the assessment of pain is highly subjective, so I often find pain management to be challenging. I will consider the patient's cause for pain, but sometimes I'm just making a judgment based on how uncomfortable they may appear. A lot of providers struggle with this. The decision of what to prescribe for pain remains subjective. Opioids are highly effective, and doctors go through years of training to learn the risks and benefits and obtain a specific license to be able to prescribe them. But in the end, the decision to prescribe opioids remains up to the doctor. What do you think this can mean for our patients? I guess this could mean that not all providers may treat pain the same way. Or in other words, one patient in pain may get different treatments depending on who they see. Exactly. This subjective determination can perpetuate differences in the way we deliver care. In fact, racial differences in pain management is well described in children and adults across all ages and clinical settings. But why would race be a reason to treat someone differently when it comes to pain? This is a good point for us to talk about bias. Bias can be explicit or intentional, and it can be implicit or unintentional. Implicit bias happens without us consciously realizing it, and it impacts the way we think and make decisions about the world around us. This bias can come from many sources, even rooted in our history. For example, the inaccurate belief that black patients are biologically different from white patients dates back to the 19th century. Published articles with little validity stated that black people had less sensitive nervous systems and some were insensible to pain. This false belief persists even to this day, where a 2016 survey showed that over 50% of medical students believed that black patients had thicker skin than white patients, and over 20% of medical students believed that black patients had less sensitive nerves than white patients. Wow. Implicit bias can run so deep. What do we know about how this has impacted pain management for our patients? I'm glad you asked. In a study of over 100,000 children across the United States, white children were more commonly prescribed opioids than self-reported non-white races. In long bone fractures, black children are less likely to achieve optimal pain reduction, 
And when it comes to appendicitis, black children are less likely to receive any pain medications at all and significantly less likely to receive opioids. Now that I know that racial differences in pain management exist, what can I do to make sure I provide equitable care to all my patients? As clinicians, we need to recognize that race is a social construct, not one that is grounded in biology. There are no validated studies that have shown that non-white children experience pain any differently than white children. The decision to prescribe pain medications is complex, but should not be based on the assumption that pain tolerance is different across races. The implicit association test is one method that individuals can use to identify existing biases that may impact our medical decision making. So bring this back to our patient with appendicitis, what should we do instead? From our discussion, what I learned is, pain in non-white patients is often underdiagnosed and undertreated. We all have implicit biases. These are unconscious, but can affect how we assess and treat pain in our patients. Tools such as the implicit association test can help us recognize our own biases and inform our practice in the future. Given that, I would recommend that we reassess our patient's pain and provide appropriate treatment until we safely deliver relief. Fabulous. Let's go check in on him now. To learn more about the 5-Minute Moment for Racial Justice and other health equity resources, visit 5mmracialjustice.stanford.edu.